from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Boom. Hello. <laughs> and welcome to the Wow Report coming to you from splendid isolation. <laughs> um, and we're going to count down the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. <laughs> Uh, I'm Fernand Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by Tom Campbell, our chief creative officer. Hello. And, and James St. James, of course, editor of The Wow Report. Well, hello, darling. It's good to see you both. It's good to see you, too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we normally come to you from the Wow storefront gallery next to Rupal Star and Hollywood Walk of Fame, but we are quarantining and... Um, Home sheltering. Yes, home sheltering, which is a good, if you need something to clear the air and make the, your room smell sweet, let me just say you need a smells like my charisma, unique to Snow and Talent Candle. Oh my God, the plugs are coming so early on this show. <laughs> Got to get them in early, right? Yeah, exactly. What um, is that, Benton? What exactly is that? I've heard, well, heard of, I've heard of uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's goop candle, smells like my vagina. What is it? Quite wow, right it's like my Christmas Eve nerve and talent candle all about. Well, Tom, you've said it all. Uh, you know, the smell of Gwyneth's vagina may not be for everyone. No. So we offer you a, a candle that smells like my charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent. I, I think it's slightly sweeter and more... Um, uh, Less pungent, perhaps. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Can I so just say, as someone who has smelled your... My, your candle that smells like Chris and you deserve in talent, Fenton. It is sweet. It's a. It's it's not musky. It's fresh. It's it's bathed in lavender petals of a fresh stream. A little hint of citrus too. Yeah, yeah. I think that was Gwyneth pinging you right now. Actually, it was, it was her lawyers. Actually, never mind. With a cease and desist. <laughs> All right, well, let's get on with the with the countdown. Uh, Tom, what have you got for number ten? Number ten. Well. Fenton, can I make a confession to you? I often feel times that my topics are so specific to American pop culture of a certain time that James and I go into a wormhole and we leave you out of some conversations. So this one, Fenton, is for you, baby. Oh, this you. week, we celebrated the Queen of England's Elizabeth's 94th birthday in quarantine in home shelter. Now, I don't know if I'm becoming a softie, because I've never cared either way for the queen. Maybe a little oh, bit. What? How dare you? How dare you? Maybe I'm number nine. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been soft. You know, that I got to tell you, that queen, the, the, the crown show about the queen's life on Netflix is so well done. We talk about this a lot. It really does warm you up to the whole family and especially her how she's been portrayed, what she's gone through. And I have to say- She's literally given her entire life to, the, to, to, to this one job. And yeah. every minute of her every day is spent in service to the country. So monarchy, jewels held in, you know, like all that money and disparity feels very old fashioned, especially now. But I have to say during this crisis, during this pandemic, I don't want to know what, what Trump has to say. I don't care. You know, I you just think there's a woman who has lived through it all, who still has her mental capacity and has spent her life in her own way in service. And I, I care more about Elizabeth. And usually there's a 21 gun salute uh, fired by the King's Troop of Royal Horse, or the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery from the Hyde Park or Green Park, followed by a 62 gun salute at the Tower of London by the Honorable Artillery Company but not this year. <laughs> well, you know, I do, you know, she gave that six minute speech a few weeks ago uh, for the Corona about, you know, staying in place and self isolating everything. And she was more inspiring in those six minutes than Donald Trump has been throughout the entire thing. And you got to give it to the woman. You also got to give it to her that in her, you know, 65 years of reign or whatever, she's never followed fashion. She's always stuck to her own frumpy look. And by God, she makes it work for her. She's got that hairdo and the little matchy matchy suit with a handbag matches the lining of her coat. And she's just, God bless her. She's never strayed from her, her look. 
how do you describe that look, James? That, it, that, it, that... It's, it's frumpy chic, you know? It's, it's mm -hmm. a very expensive, but there's not anything fashionable about it. Nothing sexual. Right, exactly. And it's you know, made, you know, the how how the lining has the um the the weights in the in the lining so that it never blows up the skirt never blows up in the wind and nothing and she um she, the way she holds her handbag is a signal to the ladies in waiting you know that like if she holds it by the 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 strap that means get me the fuck out of here right now if she has her arm through it means I can do five more minutes of this like she had there's like different signals. I hear that if she puts the purse over her right shoulder, it means I have to go number one. And if it's over <laughs> her right shoulder, she has to do number two. I believe that. And I've heard that the Queen Mum, who's no longer with us, sadly, used to carry a, a, a mixed, pre-mixed bottle of gin and tonic in that purse and just take a swig. <laughs> she did like her gin and tonic. You to toddies, didn't she? Right. I'm um, sorry. Do you follow, uh, do you follow um, Gary Gennetti on Instagram? Yes. He does this amazing thing where, is, is it Prince William or Prince Harry, the little one? Um, it's, uh, very, it's, it's William's son. Who is that? George. George, Prince George. Oh, yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. Giving acerbic sarcastic. It's absolutely fantastic on Instagram, Gary Gennetti. Um, but today he posted one, and it's a picture of the Queen peeking out from the curtains at Buckingham Palace. And he's superimposed a sort of party hat on her head and happy birthday. <laughs> and the quote is, it just says, this birthday fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, well, it must. I mean, for, I feel so badly for so many people whose birthdays are being spent in quarantine. Uh, well, this yeah. one's for you. Thank you, Tom, for me. And, and this one's for everybody out there who has a birthday during this COVID craziness. Yes, and there is a video to watch of Queen Elizabeth the home videos of her as a child and a young woman that you can watch as a certain tribute to her, if you wish. And you know what, 94 and still working every day? Good God, God bless amazing. Her. God bless her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on, number nine, James. Number nine. Well, this is something that's just basically for Tom and me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this is this is one of those rabbit holes that you can fall down. I've been watching uh, Mrs. America on Hulu, the Phyllis Schlafly uh, story. And Phyllis Schlafly, I don't know if you know of, about her, um, Fenton. She was, no. um, in the 1970s, she was a woman who was against Equal Rights Amendment for women. She was against women's lib, and she campaigned around the country and spoke at the Republican convention saying that women should be at home, and, you know, barefoot and pregnant and taking care of their husbands. They shouldn't, they, you know, the ERA was a scam, and she was very much the the enemy of people like Gloria Steinem and Betty Friedan and the, the women on the forefront of, of women's liberation. And so this is a, a series on Hulu starring Kate Blanchett as Phyllis Schlafly. And she is, it is Emmy all the way. It is, this is unbelievable The um, she, um, she, uh, it, 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 hold on one sec. Um, it's, it's interesting that Phyllis, um, was would go out and say that women should be at home and everything like that and not working because Phyllis wrote books and campaigned and spoke. I mean, like she did everything that she said women shouldn't be doing. She was a great hypocrite, but a fabulous hy hypocrite and very smart and very intelligent and very charismatic. And the cast in this is so good. Kate Blanchett, as I said, Rose Byrne is Gloria Steinem and Gloria is so glamorous and she has the exact same charisma as phyllis they're just on opposite sides yeah. and she's got that hair the sunglasses going through the aviators going through the hair. hair so sexy so beautiful so smart uh margot martindale is bella abzug and she is just she's a best supporting actress uzo aduba from orange is the new black is shirley chisholm the first black woman to uh run for um, the president and the first woman to run for president yeah. basically tracy allman is betty Friedan. unbelievable so funny john so slattery funny. is phyllis's husband from mad men jean triple horn is phyllis's sister elizabeth banks is jill ruckelhaus um, Sarah Paulson is Phyllis's best friend. Niecy Nash is one of the um, the women in the um, Ch Shirley Chisholm. James Marsden is it. The cast is just spectacular from start to finish. This is 
everything you needed to know. It's 70s fashions. It is 70s politics. It is so fantastic. I just, I think everyone needs to be watching this. She said, Phyllis Schlafly was so hateful and a horrible, horrible woman. And Kate just nails the reason why she was just so hated, but so like had so much charisma. That sounds uh, amazing. It is. My friend Johnny told me about it. So I started watching it. And then I heard yesterday, uh, James, that you were going to talk about it. But I've seen the first episode. It only gets better, I'm told. It's, yes. written, you're saying, it's written by, I should know the woman's name. I'm terrible. But it's written by a woman who was on Mad Men. Um, but it's, it really, it's, it's shocking how that story has yet to be told. You know, there's so much of the history that's been told. And it's amazing. They have lots of scenes of them, like in the New York headquarters, of Shirley Chisholm and, 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 and you know. Uh, Betty uh, Friedan. And together and cocktailing and how different they were. They really do a good job of portraying them. And there's, um, there's a bunch of, there's a couple party scenes in, a, in episodes where it's just, you see the glamour of Gloria Steinem in Warhol is like, like all like trying to get up in her. And right. it's like, everyone is trying to sort of like feed off of her energy. It's, it's really amazing. And I remember Phyllis Schlafly, she was a great target of like Doonesbury and um, like Bloom County. She was always being like targeted in the seventies. And uh, like Saturday Night Live always was making fun of her, I think. Um, so it's, it's just interesting that we get to see her story and her side of it. And it's, it's sort of a fair portrayal, but it really does show in the first episode anyway, that she didn't really start off against the Equal Rights Amendment. She saw an opportunity. Yes. You know? Yes. And, and that, yeah, and that she was kind of, she was suffering all of the discrimination that other women in power were, but she used it to sort of like meld into this like, join the boys club and and defy it's very republican it's very fox news before fox news right? it, it, she could have been a fox news of course be like news host definitely yeah. so that okay so that's uh mrs america's on hulu how many episodes or is it like being dropped once a week there are three episodes so far and i think that there might i don't know if it ends i'm i'm only i'm beginning my third episode right now so yeah, maybe six or six or eight or something like that yeah it's, it's totally worth saying uh, number eight. Um, number eight. Yeah, you know, uh, Trey Spiegel posted this on the WOW Report a few days ago. You know, I, we, every day we're being bombarded with sentimental, moving COVID stories, right? And I, I just find it hard to really engage with them. Or maybe I'm just, you know, Scrooge-like. I've sort of trampled my feelings. And I'm like, not going to go there. I'm not going to be... But Hardest Trey, Stone Bailey, I've always called you. Hardest Stone Bailey. Okay, it's just an unfeeling monster. <laughs> Queen Bailey is what I call him. <laughs> Give you the wave. <laughs> um, Trey posted this story that was on, on Reddit. Um, this guy describes himself as, uh, what he said, an old fart on the wrong side of 40. And he has a son, and he's incredibly proud of his son. He loves his son. Tom, what are you doing? I'm pointing at the wrong side of 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Let's thank you for the Me? visual. Are you saying that I'm on the wrong side of 40, you son of a bitch? <laughs> well, as I like to say, James, I'm years away from 50. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, he, he posted a story about his son, who is at university. Um, I, I guess he's like 20. And of course, when the COVID struck, his son called him up and said, can I come home and quarantine with you, dad? And he said, yes. And then he said, oh, do you mind if I bring my friend? Well, over the past few weeks, dad has a suspicion that the friend is more than a friend. And even though they have separate rooms and everything like that, the dad goes for a run every morning. And one morning on an impulse, he cracked open the door just to check on his son like he did when he was a little kid. And there they were curled up in each other's arms. And, and that's when I started, a oh, little waterwork started. Um, <laughs> and um, so he was posting to Reddit, this guy was posting to Reddit saying, how do I let my son know that it's, it's, I'm okay with them being a couple and that they don't have to sneak around? And um, there's a twist to the story, which is basically that the dad wasn't always a, a good dad to his son. In fact, he split up with the mom when, when, the, when the son was only a few months old, hardly ever saw his son. In fact, he had a, was battling a heroin addiction. Um, so he was kind of like a, a deadbeat dad. But then when the son was 12, he told 
uh, his dad that he was being horribly abused by his mother and uh, the new the father-in-law. Mm-hmm. So the so the dad quit smack, went sober, took got custody of his kid, and 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 raised the kid, which is like. Already, it's like, oh, by this point, I'm just sobbing. Anyway, um, we'll post a link to it on, on the WOW report. But well, wait, what, what was the, the solution? How does he tell his son? <laughs> well, he the advice was a lot of very, you know, a- encouraging. I mean, it was just so many people were just so moved by this, just the way the father handled this whole thing. I mean, long story short, they said, talk to him. I mean, it's like, and there's, a, there's a great follow-up because... The dad indeed waited uh, till the boyfriend was taking a bath. They had dinner. They sat down and chatted and said, "You can tell me anything." And it all came out. and And the son was laughing, saying, "Well, we didn't want to say anything to you because we didn't want you to feel weird, you know, just like that that thing." So, oh, oh, yeah, have you read? The story? I guess you haven't read the story, Jess. You should read it. Yeah. I will. I will. I could see. I really think actually it would make a great movie. Love during the time of quarantine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Only Carrie Marshall is still alive to do a, an anthology movie about mm-hmm. the night of the COVID nineteen. Right. COVID nights. Yes. COVID nights. <laughs> uh, Blake, have you got a question for us? I do have a question. Um, Rose Byrne, who plays Gloria Steinem in Mrs. America, how is she related to Gabriel Byrne? Oh, that is an interesting question. And who is her baby's daddy? So many Rose Byrne questions. <laughs> oh, I just love everything she does. She was in Spy, right? Is she in Spy with Melissa she McCarthy? She so good in Bridesmaids. I heard it's up for Oscar again this year. All right. Well, when we come back, we'll just talk more about Rose Byrne. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton Bailey, um, joined by Tom Campbell, James and James, and Blake, our producer. So you had a question for us, Blake. What was it? Yeah, um, we spoke about Mrs. America on Hulu. James watched it and Tom. And Rose Byrne plays Gloria Steinem in it. How is she related to Gabriel Byrne, who is an actor? And who is her baby's daddy? I'm going to say that she is Gabriel Byrne's niece. That sounds right to me. And who married her? Who had a baby with her? I, this sounds... It's it's somebody... Somebody like a... Uh, uh, Jude Law or somebody like that. Jude Law. Give us uh, the answer. <laughs> well, her baby's daddy is Bobby Carnival. Oh, so, lucky um, Rose. My <laughs> God, can you imagine? And she has no relation to Gabriel. I Hart. thought that was the answer. I didn't think you'd be that cruel. <laughs> I did not think you'd be that cruel, Blake. <laughs> the pandemic has changed you. <laughs> Oh, really? All right. So we are counting down the top 10 things. Let's go. Wow. Wow. And we've reached number seven. Um, Tom. Number seven. Fenton, you started us off last segment talking about all these COVID stories and images, and some are so upsetting, and it's hard to take it all in, but there's certain ones that stick out even with the amount that we see. And to me, it was over the weekend. I believe it was Colorado. A lot of people were protesting. The, you know, the people were protesting the home sheltering, and because they're, they need they need to get their hair done for God's sakes. And they're making they have their rifles and their American flags, and the president is you know supporting them in a way that only creates further chaos, which is his agenda. But there was the uh, the handful of first line workers in scrubs and sneakers. And face mask. One was happened to be a beautiful man with a nice body or something. Reason there was women there too, and they just stood in the middle of that sort of uh, parade, that that parade of of doom and shame, and just the juxtaposition. There's one particular of a woman going like, you know, go back to China or whatever it says on the sign, and they were just stand there silently like beautiful statues of freedom in the middle of the sidewalk, 
as they're being yelled at and screamed at because, you know, the juxtaposition of people who just are stir crazy and crazy and selfish with someone representing the people who are literally laying their safety and their lives and their families' lives on the line. That image is like Tiananmen Square, isn't it? It's like the guy staring down the barrel of the tank. Well, and it's also and the sort of the opposite of when the um, Native American was was chanting and the, the kid got up in his face. Remember that? The teenage yeah. boy. It's, it's these ideas of, of good versus, you know, yeah. chaos. Chaos versus, you know. And then they couldn't see it. So this thing showed up on Facebook. I have no idea its origin. I'm going to read it all. It's a little bit long. After this, you may be really happy you don't follow me on Facebook. But I'm going to read it because it, it, it just summed up that moment. And it's it was responding to it. And it said, as a nurse working in a COVID unit, these protests are the most demoralizing thing to happen throughout this whole damn experience. Yes, it's been gut-wrenching watching patients struggle for breath while unable to see their loved ones. Yes, it's been scary wondering if our dwindling supply of protect protective gear will last and if the flimsy barrier masks are even adequate to protect us. Yes, it's been hard knowing that because of my work, I have to self isolate for pretty much as long as I continue to care for COVID patients, patients, which I guarantee will be a, a way longer than any state order to ensure I don't asymptomatically spread this terrible disease virus to people I care about. All that sucks. But through it all, I've felt hopeful about the incredible solidarity and self-sacrifice and ingenuity and creativity I've seen in people's response to the situation. But these protests are corrosive to that hope. Not only would their demands lead to spikes in death, but the protesters are actively putting themselves in harm's way by gathering like this. And by putting themselves in harm's way, they are thoughtlessly dragging me and my fellow frontline workers into harm's way too. They're creating further strain in our healthcare system when we can least afford it. And they're asking the lives of people I love. Last line, just stop already. I know this whole thing sucks, but put on your big your big kid pants and join the rest of us in working together to fight the virus, not each other. That is what patriotism looks like. Brilliantly said. I mean, absolutely. Here, here. Let's move on to number six. Number six. Oh, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> it might be, yes. <laughs> um, this one is for you, Fenton. Uh, I've been watching... It's like my birthday! <laughs> it is, it is. Well, I'm, going, I'm flipping back and forth between Tom and you. I'm, I'm giving you gifts. <laughs> um, I've been watching Belgravia on uh, Epics. I don't know if you know about this. It's um, the Julian Fellows, who the creator of Downton Abbey. It's and it's... A writer of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's about the rise of the nouveau riche in the newly developed subdivision area of London called Belgravia in 1840, I believe, is when it was. It um, feels like yesterday, James, doesn't it? I, I remember it like the outfits I wore, my hairdo, uh, the boys, the hot boys of 1840. Yes, servants. Um, it starts off in 1815, though, um, at the famous Duchess of Richmond's Ball in Brussels. Um, it was for the Duke of Wellington. Of course, you remember that. I was there. I know you were there. Um, and there's uh, uh, the Trenchants have been mistakenly invited, this couple named the Trenchants. And they, um, they're they builders and they're sort of of the trade class. They aren't of the aristocracy, but they mistakenly are sort of invited. And the Duchess of Richmond is like horrified that they're there. And it's a big scandal. And all this is happening. But it turns out that the Trenchants daughter is sort of in love with the Duchess's son. And there's so there's all this going on. And then in the middle of the ball, the, the, um, people come in and say that Napoleon's army is marching and you've got to go. We've got every, we've got all the men have to leave right now and go to this place called Waterloo. And so you, you, so we know what's going to happen. And then we cut to 25 years later and everybody from that ball is dead except for the Duchess and the trenchants. And um, they, there's a secret that is binding them together that sort of, I believe is going to force the Duchess to sort of, bring the trenchants into society and help the ease their way as, as the nouveau reach class. And, um, it's very much like, uh, the, there's, it's all, you know, like the same thing as Downton Abbey. There's class struggles. There's, um, upstairs, downstairs shenanigans. There's fabulous outfits. 
there's um, breathtaking decor and hot guys in tight breeches and, you know, women with crazy curls in their hairs and bonnets, really cute bonnets. I'm all about the bonnets here. So um, it's it's really fabulous. And if you haven't, been, have you been watching it, Fenton? I have not watched it. It's created by Julian Fellows, who also wrote Gosford Park, which is... Oh, right, yeah. And I'm definitely was a Downton Abbey junkie. Uh, well after what's his name died, and so I'm I'm, re I'm really excited to see it, and I will. Yeah, it's it's a whole other era, but it's done in that same gorgeous style as as Downton, and it's the same sort of soapy soap opera uh, of of high society. It's it's really fabulous and fun. Do you think there's a chance for a Maggie Smith cameo at least to walk on or something? Well, Anne Trenchant, the the wife of the of the, she's sort of the nouveau. Not, she's not very nouveau, but she's very down to earth, and she's very sort of earthy and sort of a, a, a very motherly. And she has a um an Emma 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 who, who's the Emma from England? Emma Emma Watson? No, no, the the uh, from um, Emma Stone. No, Emma who? Emma, Emma Thompson. Thompson. Yes, yes. She's got a very sort of Emma Thompson aura about her, and you just love her to death, and she's wonderful. And, of oh, course, the old Duchess is fabulous, too. I can't oh, wait to see it. I really can't. That sounds amazing. Yes. Oh, I'm, like, like, I'm shifting around because I'm sitting on my knees. I'm sitting but... on my knees, too, and it's very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> okay, I'm on my knees, but that's a whole other story. Number five. Number five. Is Kim Jong a Ghanan? Kim Jong Un, a gone Un. Yeah, wait, hold on, hold on. Kim Jong yeah. unhealthy. Ah, get it? Kim yes. Jong unhealthy. Un Kim Jong unbelievable. <laughs> okay, okay. So the story is a unitard story. So Kim Jong Un is the dictator of North Korea. In fact, North Korea has been in the hands of the same family basically since it was created for the last seventy-five years, and um. So a few days ago, Katie Tur uh, tweeted out that Kim was brain dead um, and that she'd had heard this according to two U U.S. officials, but she quickly deleted the, the tweet saying out of an overabundance of caution. So obviously the reason North Korea is in the news, I suppose, is the last couple of years Trump has been boasting about how he loves Kim Jong-un and how they're brokering some kind of denuclear treaty, none of which is happening, of course. And Kim Jong-un, unsurprisingly, unsurprisingly, is an absolutely terrible person, a murderous dictator. He, he, he had his brother uh, bonked off at Kuala Lumpur Airport when he had people smear poison over his face. Um, so he's not a very nice guy, and he's been ruling North Korea. He's only 36, but he's been ruling North Korea since 2011 when he took over from his dad. But the thing is, he's not very healthy, and, and he's somewhat overweight, But he, and he also loves, I've heard, he has an enormous love, inordinate love of cheese. And has he's love. He's 5'3", five, he's five and he weighs 300 pounds, is what I heard. Something like that, yes. And he, in, in 2014, he had a, a cyst operation and has had cardiovascular problems um, due, the official word is, to excessive smoking, obesity, and overwork. So, you know, I, it would be earth shattering if he was, in fact, dead. But of course, no one knows. And it's all a rumor. And, and, uh, but he's supposed to have had some, some sort of surgery and been in mortal danger, I think was the word used, which made me think, I wondered at first if it was COVID because, but then, you know, North Korea claims they have no COVID cases. Right. Um, yeah. and actually, you know what? That could make sense because uh, they, there are no shops. There's no one ever on the streets. So they already have a very severe regime of social distancing. Right, right? Home, home sheltering. I just have mm -hmm. to put in the caveat that we are pre-taping our show a little bit. So the viewers may have heard that we, we don't know when the time this airs, if Kim's going to be uh, with us. He could be dead. We could, well, and, right. He could yeah. be, you know. and, 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 is, and I'm not, I can't pretend to know anything. I mean, I know a little bit, but not much. But like, is that a further stabilizing thing? No, 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 no. Because unfortunately, what happens is it's down. Then it goes between a brother and the sister. The brother is not someone who has ever been involved in politics or anything, so it's unlikely that he'll be chosen. The sister has been by Kim Jong's 
Big Kim Jong's side, and she is e more, even worse. She is apparently the 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 more evil of the the the, the family members. And she, the, literally, so bring us Kim Yo Jong. Kim Yo Jong, yes. is the sister. She's thirty one, and she sounds a fabulous sort of evil character, like yes. something she's very girl. Yeah, Drug she's very cool, but she will lead us into a nuclear holocaust. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. Yeah, but, she, she is the, 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 the other leader of the species. But here's the thing. Uh, North Korea is a Confucian society, and apparently they don't value women. So that uh, apparently the only reason she's been able to have such power is because he, Kim Jong-un, trusts her because she could never take power from him and, and the Koreans would never put up with it apparently. But uh, I don't I I don't see that the the brother is is being viable either. So unless there's some sort of coup after he dies and there's a military coup and someone else takes over, uh I I, I think we're with her. I, the I basketball player that Kim Jong un loves? Dennis, Dennis Rodman. Yeah maybe Dennis maybe he'll take over. <laughs> maybe, maybe Trump could could go there. Flee that. He needs to go somewhere soon. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's take a break. Blake, have you got a question for us? I do. Um, who invented the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words? Who said it first? It wasn't Rose Burns uncle, uh, Gabriel Burns. No. You're listening to the Radio Andy, and we'll be right back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and James and Blake. We're doing what we always do, counting down the top 10 things that made us go. Wow. <laughs> We've reached. Oh, no, wait, wait, Blake, you had a question for us. <laughs> yeah. Who was the first to utter the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words? George Eastman, the owner of Kodak Eastman or Eastman Kodak. Good, good. Oscar Wilde, but it doesn't it doesn't have a ton of phrase, you know, but maybe Oscar Wilde. Well, James doesn't get to guess because he's the one that told me this question. Who is it? <laughs> it was Napoleon. Oh, speaking of oh. Waterloo. Yes. Waterloo, my Waterloo. You know, I think that was ABBA's best single ever. The first from the best. I love it so much. Won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1976, I think. I'm right in saying. Um, oh. uh, okay, let's go on with the countdown. We've reached uh, number four. Number four. Turner Classic Movies. You guys are on to your books and your, your miniseries. Turner Classic Movies is keeping me my spirit alive during these COVID times. I'm with you on that, baby. I'm seeing so many things I can't even tell you what they are. I see that. But I saw, I saw Auntie Mame from beginning to end, like the whole thing, which I haven't done for a long time. They're doing the series this month, which is almost yeah. over, but they're doing New York in the 70s. Oh, so, fun. So it's so, I mean, what a shithole New York was in the 70s. Panic in Needle Park, um, uh, uh, Dog Day Afternoon, Circle. Yeah, a movie with, with a Melanie Mayron called Girlfriends that's just a little independent weirdo film, and it's so good. Um, and, and, and it's so much fun to watch. They've shown the Manhattan by Woody. Anyway, it's just fun to see New York in the 70s. I know you were there, you guys, in the 80s and 90s, but when it was still a little edgy. But, man, the 70s, I was still in New Hampshire as a kid, but, like, New York was going bankrupt, and it was crying. You know, it was mugging jokes on The Tonight Show. It's uh, it's pretty all, You know, all those Sidney Lumet movies are so good because the, he does all those street scenes. Yes. And you just you love looking at all the old buildings and the storefronts. But what, I, what, what caught my eye last night, and I just, this is just an FYI, if you have a chance to see it. Have you ever heard of a movie called, it's a musical, The French Line? No. It seems that a year after D Gentlemen Prefer Blondes with Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell, Howard Hughes, who was a longtime Jane Russell devotee, she was like his in his stable at RKO, um, did a musical called The French Line, which so much fun used to happen on, on, on um, cruise ships. She's, it starts off and she's in the Wild West and she's just hit another gusher and she's, it's out in the field. There's a bunch of guys and she's just abroad. She's, her body is just pure sex. 
Roz and Russell is just underrated as a... Love, Roz is my favorite, yes. She really is good. And and this is her at her height. You know, it's like the perfect her. And she um and she's just and she ends up having uh uh the actor uh what's his name oh 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 uh, uh, uh Craig Stevens who um was my neighbor he was married to um I think he was he was he was a, a famous TV star in like Route sixty six but it wasn't and he was uh, married to Alexis Smith and he lived two doors down from me to see him walk his dog as an old man anyway. He breaks up with her because he can't handle the fact that she's hitting two gushers in the same day. She's too powerful. She's too rich. And he, he wants to be the wear the pants in a relationship. So she decides with her friend played by Mary McCarthy, who's this other tough broad, but with, a, with not as good a chin, like the perfect, not quite as pretty Rosalind Russell. And she's a sassy girl too. And she's like a distress designer now, but she's really just an old home girl. She's like, pronounce her name. She's like La, 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 La Fontaine. And she's like, La Fontaine is my name. Anyway, they go on a cruise where where Rosalind Russell uh, uh, changes identity with a with a young uh, model and ends up that the private investigator to keep an eye on her doesn't know it's her and falls in love with her and you get it. It's a <laughs> lot of fashion shows, <laughs> musical numbers that are super tacky. Like it's a camp classic that has been forgotten, and it ends with this dance that she does that I realized this movie had been banned when it came out. And I love Howard Hughes, how pervy he was and how kind of sexually advanced he was. And it's, it, she strips down to what looks like a bikini, but it's just flesh colored in between, but it's a fashion show. It's a production number. And I watched it on, um, on Turner Classics and it was all in one long shot. And even I'm like, what's going on? No one shoots everything in a long shot. It's the censored version, which I've gone online to watch because she's just jiggling her boobs. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It went, it went out in 3D. It was the French plane <laughs> in 3D. And it was like, you know, uh, J, JR in 3D, she'll poke both your eyes out. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> It's so worth finding and seeing. It wasn't even a really clean copy. I think it's a very rare thing to come across. <laughs> I enjoyed it thoroughly. There's a if you're into movies about with picture with New York, you know New York scenery and everything like that. There's a movie from the 1960s that you've got to check out. It's called Mr. Budwing, and it stars James Garner as an amnesiac who's trying to piece together his life. He wakes up one day on a park bench and he can't remember anything, and so he keeps trying to remember what happens. He's wandering around New York with Suzanne Pochette. And uh, it, I, there's, I think Angela Lansbury is in it too. And they are trying to piece together his life. And it's just the scenery in New York is black and white in the 1960s. Mr. Budwing, if you ever get a chance to All watch right. that, it's fantastic. Right. If you're having trouble with the, with the uh, sheltering at home, Turner Classic Movies to the rescue. Number three. Um, you know, over the weekend, there was the concert for the World Health Organization that was organized by Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy uh, Fallon, Stephen Colbert, and Lady Gaga. And um, I watched it, and it's it's fascinating. And there's some some good and some bad that I want to talk about in a minute. Um, a, a number of... And right afterwards, the right wing w attacked it. It was they went bananas because a you know Rupert Murdoch in you know the New York Post and the Daily Mail immediately said that it was you know this sort of fatuous exercise and you know narcissism blah 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 um, because basically because Trump had just defunded the World Health Organization had defunded who so all the Trump and Z's immediately were like the. the who is evil and how dare they, these celebrities, you know, support it, blah, 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 blah. Um, and to be fair, like I said, some of it worked and some of it did not work. Yeah, everyone's I doing thought, it differently now. Everyone's trying, right? I thought, I thought Lizzo was spectacular. I thought that was, it's the best she's ever been. I was blown away. The, um, uh, the, Rolling Stones did You Can't Always Get What You Want. And I'm not even a big Rolling Stones fan. I am. I You know, I, you can't not be. But I, it brought tears to my eyes, and that was spectacular. Um, I thought that Gaga doing the Charlie Chaplin, you know, smile. Smile, though your heart is breaking. I, that really got to me, too. I, I, I choked up during that. I thought Billy Joe Armstrong was fantastic, too, when he did Wake Me Up When September Ends. Um, oh, yeah. J Lo, I did, she first of all she had the nerve to take on a Barbara Stanwyck. I mean a Barbara, a, Bar, 
a Barbra Streisand song. Right. And I don't know that I believe that she was singing live. I feel like she was like, wait a minute, where's that me singing people reverbed tape that we did three years ago? Where is it? Put it in the, put the CD in. And, and then she sort go. of, <laughs> yes. And the, mic was in the, tree from the tree that was in her kitchen or house or something. Yes, where she had that. Yeah, she's outside and there's a, it's beautifully lit and there's trees with the Christmas lights yeah. all over. Da, 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 da. That to me was a little strange. The one that just angered me more than anything and just give me a minute here. We, God damn it. And we know about making James angry. You <laughs> just don't want to do it. I've both okay. been there many times. <laughs> Sean Mendez and Camila Cabello. God bless them. They're adorable. Sweet as can be. They're in love. They're in love, but they they sang the Louis Armstrong classic um, uh, Wonderful wow. World. What a beautiful world. It's an old man near the end of his life. He's an African American man who is looking back on his life and he's had a hard life. He's lived through Jim Crow. He's he's had troubles. He's had a hard life. And he's saying to himself that he is forgiving all of that. And he's saying it, it was a beautiful life and it is a beautiful world. And even though life has been hard, I forgive everybody and everything. And I, the next generation is going to have it so much easier than me. And that's a wonderful thing. I am not bitter. There is not any bitterness in me. And I'm singing this song about forgiveness and love and you are jane st james who i respect so much you are that's all subtext none of those it's not words of jim crow in bad life and it's a wonderful world no but no no, no, no. But that's are, the, thing, that's the right. context of the song yeah. is that louis, that louis has had a rough life and he's come nearing the yeah. end of his life and he's singing he's yeah. looking back and saying it's all wonderful these two kids are 20 year old <laughs> celebrities in their mansions who have never known a moment of hardship in their life and for them to be singing about how the children are going to have it better than them them. How on earth is anybody going to ever have it better than Camilo Cabello and Sean Mendez? They are at the apex of the food chain. Like no, this the future is not going to be better than what they have. But they are saying, and it is true that it is a wonderful world. I buy that, James. I have to say, in Camilla's defense, she still has to put her hair extensions in one at a time, like everybody else. Okay. <laughs> I want to say my favorite part of that special, which I loved actually, and I agree with you, is my favorite <laughs> moment was when Laura Bush and Michelle Obama gave a joint address to the nation. Because you realize how Trump has, and Melania, that they weren't on it because they don't support the cause, which is the World Health Organization during a pandemic. And this is such an opportunity. He could have brought us all together. He could have used this in, for, as a political advantage in such an amazing way. He's incapable. And the last thing, and I'll say it in a French Canadian accent, and I'll shut up. The finale, the stolen finale was Celine Dion. Celine Dion. Celine Dion. Well, we posted a link. You can watch One World together at home on the wire report and see what you think yourself, uh, about it yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just the sight of you looking grumpy. It's just, <laughs> I don't know if I can go on. I'm just so terrified of being right. But at least being quarantined here, if you get really mad at me, I, I just hang up. I'm just gone. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to sit next to you for the next half hour or whatever. Listen, number two. Number two. I've been trying for weeks to write about, uh, talk about this book, Frontline, um, which is by Jonathan Kaplan, who's the ABC correspondent and uh, president of the White House Correspondents Association. Because the book has just driven, infuriated me. But, you know, also, I know people listen to the show, whoever may listen to the show. The last thing they want to hear is complaints about Trump. And, you know, I realize he can be a bit of a favorite topic here. Um, but I'm not going to talk about Frontline, therefore. But I have got to talk about this article, this article, Highest Office, which is on uh, the Graydon Carter blog, uh, Air Mail. Okay. And in it, um, let's see, it's written by Hannah Seligson. Hannah Seligson. And she basically is talking about Noel Kassler. And Noel Kessler is a stand-up comedian who also was Ivanka Trump's handler on the final tapings of A Celebrity Apprentice. Uh, and he basically 
has been ragging on Trump for actually years now, basically saying president of the United States is a drug addict. And it is funny that he's been out there saying this and, and we all sort of just seem to not accept it, but it, it doesn't seem to have caught fire, but it feels like in the last week or so, this story has finally gotten some traction. And, um, He's well, he also you know, saying that we're on the on the Apprentice, that Trump is always shitting himself, and uh, nobody has, and everybody has to like sort of clean it up and, and not not pay any attention to it, not pretend it didn't happen, which is very Michael Jackson, if you remember, right? Celebrities are always pooping in their pants, it seems. <laughs> and everybody and has to, yes, he said because I think what has infuriated him finally are these Trump um, propaganda press conferences about the about the virus that Trump is basically using as rallies to attack the press, et cetera, et cetera. He says, I've seen Trump snort Adderall, shit himself on a TV set and make his 16 year old daughter give him a lap dance. But this is the craziest shit I've ever seen him do. Uh -huh. um, he's very, he, he is perfect about Ivanka Trump. He says that she has a practice pleasantry that can never be mistaken for genuine kindness. <laughs> okay, it's lovely. It's just delicious. And um, he, he basically says, the president is a speed freak. I'm quoting. It makes sense if you think about it. Methamphetamine was invented by the Nazis to keep the fighter pilots up all night on bombing runs. And now Trump uses it to hate tweet from the toilet at 4 a.m. in a self-centered rage. Yeah. Um, he, he, he has, of course... I guess in a way he's one of the few or the first or the only uh, apprentice, celebrity apprentice person to break ranks. Uh, we all know that that famous tape came out in the last closing days of the election campaign where Trump said, you know, I grabbed him by the pussy. He admitted to sexual assault. Um, but no one else has really come forward. And he, he says that he describes the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement, as a no dumbass. As in, no, Mr. President, I am not going to stay silent anymore. He also says that giving Trump, Donald Trump the Miss Universe pageant is like giving Jeffrey Dahmer a cooking show. <laughs> um, he also has been saying that the reason why he can say these things is that Donald can't sue him because if he sues them, then they have to go to court and produce the tapes. And right. Donald doesn't want that. He ne doesn't want any of this to ever come out. It is interesting, you know, people have, uh, we've all speculated for years now why those tapes, those apprentice and celebrity apprentice tapes haven't been made public. And the, and the defense has always been that Mark Burnett can't release them because they belong to NBC. But in point of fact, the tapes themselves, the outtakes and the never aired content is owned by MGM. And of course, Mark Burnett is yeah. the chairman of yeah. the company. Mark, yeah, Mark and Roma are great friends of Donald yeah. Melania. In fact, uh, Mark Burnett is one of the 47 people that Trump follows on Twitter. So, yeah. Um, yeah. There is a little crack of light, by the way, uh, in that there was a court hearing the other day, and the judge ordered specific tapes to be released. Um, it's part of a class action lawsuit. So maybe, you know, maybe... But in the meantime, it, it's going to be. It's, he's going to block it and block it and block it for years and years and years. It will never, ever, ever see the light of day. And did you ever see yeah, that? Wait, 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 I'm sorry, but because once it gets kicked up to the higher courts, he stacks the courts in his, uh, you know, for with his buddies. So once if if it gets kicked up to the Supreme Court, you think you don't? You think Brett Kavanaugh is going to let that happen? No. Did you see that tape? Though? There was a tape of Trump giving a speech. I forget where it was. I. Where like something falls out of his nose. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, he it's definitely he has all the signs of Adderall addiction. It just it it's he snorts lines of, of Adderall, and I know what that looks like. I've been there. I've I know people who are Adderall addicted, and <laughs> yes, that's the expression right there. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, let's take a break. Um, we'll be right back after the break with the number one thing that made us go wow this week. You're listening to Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. Um, if you're quarantining, well, you should be. I think everybody within, everybody listening to this show, I'm sure, is not on the beaches in Florida. Let me say that. <laughs> um, 
But what you can be doing with your time is you can be watching Wow Presents Plus. We've got James and James on Wow Presents Plus. We've got a, a special lineup all through the week. Uh, hashtag STFH, which stands for Stay the Fuck On. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Alyssa Edwards is on, Trixie and Katya are on, James St. James is on, um, and more. So That's much more. Every day, fresh at home content. Mm -hmm. Sign up at wowpresents.com. So, what is the number one thing that made us go wow this week, guys? Number one. Well, what the tuck is, is what I want to say. What the tuck. Uh, Fox News host Tucker Carlson came after uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, one of the one of the people we love more than life itself at, at the Wow Report, um, and he called her a child of privilege, which is just what like one of those WF moment WTF moments. Tucker Carlson, aka Tucker Swanson McNear Carlson, heir to the Swanson Frozen Dinner Fortune. I don't know if you knew that. His father was a U.S. ambassador. He he grew up attending bo elite boarding schools. He went to a private li liberty arts, um, liberal arts school, Trinity College. And he has the unmitigated gall to call Alexander AOC a child of privilege. Um, you know. People with four last names should not be calling out anyone for their privilege. He's just, he's, he's such a piece of slimy piece of, yeah. Um, he said, um, Alexandria Cortez, Ocasio Cortez doesn't make sense until you learn that she grew up Sandy Ocasio within the affluent suburb of Westchester. Um, he went out, he, she went to a pointless private college, blah, blah, blah. The truth of the matter is she was born and raised in the Bronx. Her family moved to Westchester when she was a child. After graduating from Boston University, she moved back to the Bronx and worked as a bartender and a waitress to help her mother, who was a bus driver and a house cleaner, fight off foreclosure. So it's it's just one of those things where like these Fox people, they'll say something outrageous that is blatantly not true, but nobody ever calls them on it and their followers believe them. And it's just maddening, and I just wanted to point out that AOC is not a child of privilege. It is the destruction of truth. It is the creation of chaos. It's There's this video out, too, that shows, you know, what we already know, but Trump saying, I am going to defund the HWO, and then him like, I never said that a day later. And it's just like by putting, it's been true forever, but somehow it's effective. It's yeah. like he, he also said the other day that it, during February and March he didn't hold any rallies, and right. the, the, the reporter said, "No, you did it on this date, this date," and he said, "No, no, no, I didn't." But he just says both things, and and somehow they're both listened to. They're both given about the same weight, and truth disappears. And he whatever did. someone is has done, you accuse the other person of doing yeah. it, and yeah. And it's so for Tucker Carlson, a child of privilege, to call Alexandria Ocasio Cortez a child of privilege, it's just maddening. It's, it it's, is. It is. It really wow. is. Wow. Wow. Oh, that really does wow. make me go wild. Yes. I'm going to say, if you want relief, I will do my club. It's Stephen Sondheim's 90th birthday. He's still with us. And Broadway.com, which last week did John Tolan's Buy and Seller, is this week doing a special birthday. And it's like Patty Laplone, Meryl Streep, and, and uh, Bernadette Peters. So it is a gay man's wet dream if you're at all into the theater. And it's all free. I think it is a fundraiser, but you can, you know, catch it uh, this, this Sunday on Broadway.com YouTube show. Well, thank you, Tom. And thank you, James. And thank you, Blake. Um, in the meantime, go out and, well, actually, look, don't go out, right? In the meantime, stay the fuck home. But do something that makes the world go wow. Wait, Tom, I have um, a picture that I have that I, it, over there, right there, that I keep hoping you'll notice. I found it in a thrift store, and I'm going to bring it up to you, and you tell me who you who it is, because okay. it took me about a year hanging to my wall before I realized what it was. Oh, my God. Can you, uh, it better not be me in chats. It's Queen Elizabeth. No. Is it Kitty Carlisle Hart? No, close. Is it's it Mercedes McCambridge at the Oscars when she won for Johnny Guitar Best Supporting Actress? Ah! 
Isn't that hysterical? I found it in a thrift store here in Hollywood, and I'm thinking it was probably in her house, and somehow it ended up, you know, like she probably had this. How much did you pay for it? It was like 40 bucks or something like that, but I have a feeling that it's probably like if we could trace it back to the Mercedes estate. Do you think so, or do you think it's just some incredible gay fan who just couldn't oh, get it? Yeah. Is it fa is it early fan fan art, or is it is it was it hanging above her fireplace? This could be like that show Treasure in the Attic, where you found a a, a multi million dollar piece of work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Remember when I used to be a big uh, vintage record store goer before the CDs came, and you would go to the new records bin. Up, I went to the one on Franklin, and you would see these immaculate collections of Doris Day, Barbara Streisand, you know, like every album. You, and all I could think of at the time was the 90s. is like, this is a dead gay man's. Yes, yeah. Especially back in the 80s and 90s when you knew that yeah. it was people do with it. It was just and like, you know, send it out. And I'm wondering, you should write, your next novel should be based on bric-a-brac found in the story that goes behind it, you know? Well, I, I've told I've told you, Fenton, that I want to do something. I want Jasper to come and spend a week with me in my apartment. And I'm just going to go, I'm going to get drunk and tell the stories of everything in my apartment. Like a sort of right. on the show sort of thing. Yes, yes. Great odds, darling. Yes. Hey, great is the original home sheltering. We, we, we <laughs> yeah, yeah, home, sh home sheltering with Jasper and James. Well, have you seen on, on Instagram, uh, Jonathan Adler is doing a series, um, an object a day with J.A. Oh, okay. see, that's fun. That's what I want to do, too. Hey, you do, just do a book a day or do a... Do a um, I have this wonderful um, Bible from 1840 that my mother, that was my a great aunt Helen's that I that has all these like newspaper clippings from the 1800s in it. That's really fun. Is, it, is this? Yeah. The, is this yeah. the, I also have these Confederate swords. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it the Joy of Text with James uh, and James. I like it. Those belong to my to my uh, you know, grandfather. <laughs> I'm a smarty, Agent 86. A little get smart, uh, you know, fan paraphernalia. Is that good? I have this with the, I got at um, Tori Spelling's uh, garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you pay for that? This was like $10, but it, I think it was like the, the find of the, of the. It has special meaning, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, All right, you guys. Love you deeply.